2017 was an amazing year for JRPGs. We saw long-awaited sequels, remasters to beloved PS2 classics, as well as the Nintendo Switch's first major JRPG in the system's first year on the market. But now it's time to look towards the future. 2017 may have been amazing, but 2018 has the possibility to be even better. Here's a roundup of every JRPG coming out in 2018. While the 3DS is now nearing its 8th year on the market, it still continues to be a force to be reckoned with for JRPG fans, as we've got two hitting the 3DS this year, starting with Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology. Perfect Chronology is an enhanced port of the DS Classic, featuring new portrait art, game balancing, full voice acting, as well as an entirely new third timeline to explore. This is a game that has an enormous cult following behind it and is absolutely worth your time if you're a 3DS owner looking for a great JRPG to play this year. Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology launches in North America for 3DS on February 13th. Square Enix surprised us all last year with the announcement of a full HD remake of the 16-bit classic Secret of Mana. This new remake will feature full 3D environments, character models, and assets, as well as voice acting and a newly arranged score to go along with the shiny new graphics. Some fans have criticized the remake for its somewhat chibi presentation, but I think we'll have to wait and see how the full game shapes up before we can pass any judgment. Secret of Mana HD launches in North America on PS4, PS Vita, and PC February 15th. The original Nino Kuni was a breath of fresh air in a time where the JRPG was at a lull. It featured a beautifully rendered world that harkened back to the classic RPGs of the Super Nintendo and had a battle system that, while hard to get into, rewarded those who stayed patient and put in the work to train their familiars. Nino Kuni 2 is the long-awaited sequel to that game. Featuring gorgeous 60 frames per second gameplay, the same beautiful art style, and all new revamped combat, Nino Kuni 2 is shaping up to be an amazing follow-up to one of my favorite JRPGs of the last generation. Nino Kuni 2 launches in North America on PS4 and PC March 29th. 3DS JRPG number 2 hitting the 3DS this year is Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux. Similarly to Perfect Chronology, Strange Journey Redux is an enhanced port of the original DS game of the same name. This port will feature new character artwork, new demons, voice acting, and a new route. If you've never played Shin Megami Tensei, they are very, very hardcore JRPGs and are definitely not for the faint of heart. But if you're a Shin Megami Tensei fan who missed out on the original, or a JRPG fan looking to play this for the first time, this enhanced version is the perfect way to play. Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey Redux launches in North America on 3DS May 15th. Okay, here we go. This one is a huge one for me. So if you've been following me for a while, you probably know of my history with the Soul series. For those who don't, I have been with the series from the very beginning. It was almost a decade ago that I watched Kevin Van Ord's GameSpot review that convinced me and my best friend to go to the nearest GameStop to pick up Demon Souls, an all-new, brutally hard action RPG being published by Atlas. And once I played it, I fell in love with it instantly. The world, the gameplay, the atmosphere, it was unlike anything I'd ever played before. So obviously, this love transferred to its spiritual successor in Dark Souls, a game that is equally as good, if not better, than its predecessor, and a game that has, at this point, birthed an entire genre all its own. So, when a remaster of Dark Souls 1 was announced, I was immediately on board. This remaster will feature dedicated servers with the ability to play with more people than ever before, all the DLC, 1080p graphics at 60 frames per second on PS4 and Xbox One, 720p 30 frames per second on Nintendo Switch, and full PS4 Pro and Xbox One support for a crispy 4K 60 frames per second. If you have not played this game yet, this is absolutely the perfect time to play. Dark Souls Remastered launches in North America for PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch on May 25th. So, for the second half of our list, these are all games that are set to come out in 2018, but none of them have a defined release date as of the recording of this video. So if you're watching this in the future and I bring up a video game that does have a release date, just keep in mind, I was recording this in the past, there was not a release date when I recorded it, so yeah. Anyway, let's get to them. Project Octopath Traveler is one of my most anticipated games of 2018. I even made a video about why you should be excited for it that you can click or tap now to check out. In short, Octopath Traveler is a brilliant blend of 2D and 3D with a multifaceted narrative, beautiful soundtrack, and a fun combat system. If you're a JRPG fan looking for the next big RPG on the Nintendo Switch, then look no further than Octopath Traveler. Project Octopath Traveler launches this year on Nintendo Switch. Moving from one of my most anticipated JRPGs to the most anticipated JRPG of the year for me, we have Dragon Quest XI. If it actually comes out this year, it will have been 13 years since we've gotten a proper, 
fully 3D Dragon Quest game here in the West. Dragon Quest, in my opinion, is the epitome of the JRPG in its purest form, and seeing Akira Toriyama's distinct style come to life thanks to the awesome power of current generation hardware leaves me foaming at the mouth for this game to finally come stateside. I mean, look at these screenshots. This doesn't even look like something that is running in real time. The interesting thing about Dragon Quest XI is that there are two completely different versions of the exact same game. There is a 3DS version and a PS4 version, two systems that couldn't be any farther from each other as far as capabilities go. And technically there's a third version, because with the 3DS version on the top screen, you will get something akin to, say, Dragon Quest VII on the 3DS, and on the bottom screen, the game displays in real time as a 16-bit classic style RPG. This is one of the coolest things I've ever seen an RPG do, and I wish more games would do this, though I totally understand why they don't. Another interesting tidbit is that in Japan, they actually sold one bundle that had Dragon Quest XI for 3DS and PS4 in the same bundle. This is something that both Nintendo and Sony had to sign off on. One bundle of a game that includes a Nintendo game and a Sony game, a PS4 and a 3DS game. That's something pretty unheard of in my opinion, and something I really wish we would get here, but we're probably most certainly not going to get that bundle here. Dragon Quest XI launches in North America on PS4 and 3DS this year. It is worth noting that it is also coming to the Nintendo Switch, but that hasn't even released in Japan yet, so that will come probably much, much later. So there's not much info at all on this one. On January 1st, 2017, during a Fire Emblem themed direct, Nintendo stated that a new mainline entry would be coming to the Switch in 2018. This is huge for one big reason. This will be the first time in over a decade, ever since Radiant Dawn on the Wii, that the series has had an entry on a home console. As a huge Fire Emblem fan, this is a game I am so hyped for and cannot wait to see more of. Fire Emblem launches in North America this year on Nintendo Switch. After the incredibly disappointing Valkyria Revolution, Valkyria Chronicles 4 seems to be Sega's way of saying, we're sorry, for a game that, honestly, I've never heard anyone defend. This is a return to form and the true sequel that fans have wanted ever since Valkyria Chronicles 2 on PSP. This fourth entry brings back the third-person shooting slash tactics hybrid as well as the Industrial Revolution setting that made the first three games so unique in the first place. Valkyria Chronicles 4 launches this year for PS4 and PC. Code Vein is the newest game in the Souls-like genre. It's part Dark Souls, part vampire anime, and has a ton of flashy style in its presentation. Its mechanics will be very familiar to anybody who's played a Souls game. Killing enemies gives you a currency used for leveling up, dying makes you lose that currency, dying again on the way back to pick up your currency makes you lose them permanently, and resting at checkpoints makes all our enemies respawn, and so on and so forth. One unique aspect about the game, however, is that you have an AI companion along with you the entire time. She can help you fight enemies or draw them off of you when you're getting ganged up on. If you die, she can even revive you, though it depletes some of her own health in the process. And once she dies, she doesn't come back until you rest at a checkpoint. Honestly, in a way, the AI sounds like a player extension of the Estus Flask, which could really prove to be a way that Code Vein kind of makes itself stand out in a genre that is, at this point, pretty saturated. Code Vein launches in North America on PS4, Xbox One, and PC sometime this year. Originally announced as an HD entry in the Shin Megami Tensei series exclusively for the Nintendo Switch, this was later revealed as Shin Megami Tensei V, the fifth entry in the mainline SMT series. We don't know much about this game other than its title and that it's being developed exclusively for the Switch. We'll have to wait and see on this one, but I assume if you've enjoyed all the other mainline entries, you'll probably feel right at home with this one. Shin Megami Tensei V launches in North America on Nintendo Switch sometime this year. Trails of Cold Steel is part of the very, very long-running Legend of Heroes series. The first two entries weren't mainstream successes by any means, but they are hugely popular within the hardcore JRPG community. The series' third entry was released last year in Japan, and while it has not been announced for a Western release as of yet, I'd be really surprised if we didn't see it this year. Trails of Cold Steel 3 launches in North America on PS4 probably sometime this year. Okay, now it's time for the bonus round. These three games might come out this year, but let's be real, they're probably not. Kingdom Hearts 3 ain't coming out this year, but it sure would be nice, wouldn't it? I've been sold on the idea of Kingdom Hearts 3 ever since 2 came out 12 years ago, but the most recent footage of the Toy Story world has me 100% sold. I mean, it just looks so good. Ugh. Oh my god, it's gonna be such a good game when it comes out in 2025. 
So this is a game fans have been waiting for since basically the first game's release. A full console entry in the mainline Pokemon series. Nintendo first announced this core Pokemon RPG back at E3 2017, and while we have no details, gameplay, or even a logo with text next to it, just the promise that it is now in development, and that it has been for over a year now. Will it come out this year? Probably not, but we can dream. On possibly the farthest end of the dreamer spectrum, we have Final Fantasy VII Remake. This was announced in 2015 at Sony's E3 press conference to an unreal reaction. Sony's E3 experiences in theaters and sitting in a theater full of like-minded people erupt as the title was revealed was unlike anything I've ever experienced. I shouted, I cried, I applauded, I freaked out because it was it's finally happening. A Final Fantasy VII remake is actually happening. Will the game come out this year? Hell no. <gasps> will it even be good? Who knows? Only time will tell. Anyway, that's it for me, guys. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Out of all the ones on the list, what JRPGs are you most looking forward to this year? And are there any JRPGs that I forgot to mention? If so, let me know in the comments down below. A lot of time and a lot of research went into this video, so I hope you enjoyed it. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a great day, and I will catch you guys in the next video.